How's it going today, guys? We are going to start section 1-9, which deals all about inverse functions. <clears throat> We're going to break it up into a total of five videos. And our objectives for this unit, this section, are to be able to find the, inf the inverse functions informally, and we're going to be doing that on this video, and also verify that two functions are inverse functions of each other. That's going to be our second video. We want to use graphs of functions to determine whether functions have inverses. We need to use the horizontal line test to determine if the functions are one-to-one. -one. You'll understand what that means later. And find inverses algebraically. So what do we mean by an inverse function? Now, you don't have to write all this down. It's just kind of FYI. But every time that we learn something in math, <clears throat> The next thing that we learn after that is how to undo what we did first. Okay, so first we learned how to add things, then we learned how to subtract. Those are opposite operations. First we learned multiplication, and then we learned division. Those are opposite operations. Okay, they're actually referred to as inverse operations. And every mathematical operation has its own inverse. However, what if a uh, function has more than one operation to it? Suppose you have addition and multiplication. Or if you have even more than that, is there still a way to find an inverse? And the answer to that is yes. The answer is yes. When one or more operations are performed on a number, that's part of the criteria in order to be a function. And to undo that function requires an inverse function. There are several interesting aspects to inverse functions that we're going to learn in this particular section. We're going to start by talking about the domain and the range and how the domain and range of the original function are related to that of the inverse function. Okay, when a function is performed on a number, recall that the set of input values is referred to as the domain and the output values is the range. Okay, the domain was all of the x values and the range was all the y values. In the case of an inverse function, it's actually backwards from that. That is, the domain of the original ends up being the range of the inverse. And the range of the original becomes the domain of the inverse. <clears throat> I'll use some actual numbers to kind of explain what I mean. Suppose that we have this following situation. We don't have an operation per se. We just know that the domain of the original function is negative 1, 2, 3, 6, 10. And that when you plug those values in, the range ends up being 1, 7, 9, 15, 23. Okay, the inverse operation is exactly the opposite of that. Okay, the inverse operation has the range of the original as its domain and the domain of the original ends up being the range and you want to kind of keep this in the back of your head that the entire point of an inverse is to undo the original function so if you plug x into the original equation f of x it would spit out some y if we then took that y and plugged it in the inverse it would spit out the original x that we started with so in other words, it completely undoes the original function. Okay, real quick, let me just kind of explain what I meant there. I'm going to give you two functions here. I'm going to give you f of x, and I'm just going to say that it's 4x, 4 times x. And I'm going to tell you that the domain is, uh, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then obviously, the range would be 4, 8, 12, 16. Okay? The inverse, it undoes it. What's the opposite of multiplying by 4? The opposite is dividing by 4. So our inverse function is x divided by 4. Okay, and like I said, that the um, 
domain and the range of the two are, are switched. So my domain of the inverse is going to be 4, 8. You know, and I know what you're saying. My, my writing is really shabby, but when you got this bulbous, spongy little thing there that you're writing with, it makes it kind of awkward. I happen to have fine penmanship, thank you. And then this is one, two, three, four. Okay, so if I were to take one and plug it into the F equation, I get four out of it. When I take that inverse function and I plug the four that I just got into it, I get one. So in other words, the number that I started with is exactly the number that I end with. Uh, so basically, f inverse undid the original function f. If I were to take and plug in uh, 3, f of 3 is 12. All right, when I plug 12 in, let me get rid of that. When I plug 12 into inverse function, out kicks three. And so I end up with exactly what I started as. All right, so that's the point. When I do one function here, I get a number. If I do this function afterwards, it undoes it, and I end up with exactly what I started with. Here's kind of a visual sense of, of what is meant by that whole thing. Suppose you have the domain of F, that uh, blue oval, and every time you plug X in, out kicks some Y, which is the range, that orange oval. All right, the inverse function is the opposite. That orange oval ends up being the domain of the inverse, and when you plug it into the inverse equation, it kicks out um, what was originally the domain of the original. In other words, you get x back out. Yeah. And here is the formal definition. Let f and g be two functions such that f of g of x, that's a composite function, equals x for every x in the domain of g. And g of f of x equals x for every x in the domain of f. Under these conditions, the function g is the inverse function of the function f. And the notation is that f with the negative 1 superscript to it, it's read f inverse. So what that means is if you take f of f inverse, you get x. If you switch it around and you take f inverse of f, you also get x. Again, this will make more sense as we go through this. All right, some functions are real simple, and you can intuitively determine what the inverse is, like these. Okay, in each of these situations, there's only one operation occurring. Okay, intuitively, you know that if f of x is 6 times x, well, the opposite of multiplication is division. So your inverse is x divided by 6. If the original is subtracting 12, then the inverse is going to be adding 12. Okay, you can think of that 1 fifth x as being x over 5 or x divided by 5, which means their inverse is going to be 5 times x. And how do you undo a cube? You take the cube root. All right, so in those simple situations where there's only one operation happening to a particular function, it's easy. However, there are going to be times when there are more than one operation. We have to uh, work a little harder at those, but that's okay. That's on the next video. Adios.